Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. My name is Crumbs and today we'll be discussing underrated picks on patch 12.12b. These champs are barely ever picked, but when played right, are just as good and sometimes even better than the popular meta picks. We'll be going over their builds and what makes them so OP. That way, you can see how to use them to start hard carrying your own games. We'll be starting things out in the top lane with Olaf. When he first got his mid-scope update, Olaf was a ridiculously strong top laner, demolishing every other champ in the role with ease. Riot dished out some nerfs, but they didn't even come close to gutting him. These small tuners left him in a very strong spot, yet he's nowhere near as popular as he was before. Next patch, Olaf is getting some changes, but they are mostly aimed at the jungle. He's getting more attack speed at higher HP from his passive, which will give him a quicker clear speed. The nerf to his health regen is meant to be a way to make him power neutral in the top lane with that extra attack speed, but honestly, I think it's still overall a buff for him there as well. How often are you just sitting back and taking poke as Olaf, rather than going in for kills anyways? So, even after those go live next week, you'll be able to abuse this pick. As far as his itemization goes, the build we have here is a pretty generic one that makes you beefy enough to frontline in teamfights, but don't feel like you have to always build for 5v5s. If your comp isn't that great for teamfighting, or that's just not your preferred playstyle, you can focus on building specifically to side lane. For that, items like Blade of the Ruined King, Black Cleaver, and Hullbreaker are all welcome additions to the build, depending on who you're dealing with. Our meta videos, like this one, are a great way to keep up with what's going on in League so you know what picks are worth learning and which ones you should drop. But that's not enough to climb. If you're really serious about finally ranking up this season, you should consider visiting us over at ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros, like CoreJJ, Aphromoo, and Xmithy, to help you really understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized, one-on-one -on -one experience, our top-tier coaches are available 24-7 to help you anytime you want it. Whichever option you choose, stop spinning your wheels on your own and get on the fast track to higher elo today. Now, let's get back to the video, shall we? The other underrated top laner that you should really think about adding to your pool is Akshan. Whether you're dealing with bruisers, tanks, juggernauts, or even other ranged champions, he's pretty much always a solid pick. What makes him so strong is his ability to kite in and out of fights and switch to a full all-in style depending on the opponent you're dealing with. The one big issue we always talk about when looking at other ranged champions is that it's very easy to shut them down. They may bully hard in the first few levels with the range advantage, but most other top laners can just take them on and then all in once they have ults. But with Akshan, the movement speed from his passive makes it super easy to constantly kite back and forth with his E serving as an extra failsafe if your foe really tries to commit for the kill. He's also super slippery when it comes to ganks, since you can just swing all the way to the other side of the lane the second you see the enemy pass over a ward. The last selling point for you is that on top of his strong early game, Action also scales pretty well. As long as you actually build him to do damage, he can very easily 100-0 other squishy targets he catches out and shreds through tanks in teamfights. And having the ability to revive teammates means that you can very easily turn a game around or just help close out a winning one faster. Taking a look now at the jungle, the first pick we have for you is Sejuani. She's doing surprisingly well all of a sudden. For the past several months, even for a couple of seasons, Sejuani has been an overall pretty meh pick. She hasn't necessarily been awful, but she hasn't been great either. The main reason for her becoming good probably just has to do with the general meta shift we've seen during the durability patch. With games being less snowball-y, champs that take a bit longer to come online aren't as badly punished by more aggressive early picks. Also, tanks as a whole have been doing a lot better, especially after the little buff they got to their items on patch 12.11. Now, all of this isn't to say that Sejuani is some sleeper OP hidden god tier pick. Her kit still has its limits, and you won't suddenly be able to just 1v9 with her after watching this video. But if your team needs a frontliner, and you have at least one good melee laner to play around, she's definitely a strong option to consider. A champ I'm surprised we have to label as underrated is Trundle. This champ is incredibly strong, and that's something we've been preaching for months. 
He's a hard counter to pretty much every other OP and S tier champ in the role with his AD steal shutting down other bruisers and his ult making it easy for your team to completely shred through tanks and juggernauts. His dueling is very powerful, so you never really have to worry about being forced to concede camps. The only thing is he isn't great with dealing with ranged champions that can kite him like Kindred or Graves, but in those cases, it's as simple as pillaring and walking away. It's not like they can force fights on you anyways. Most people play Trundle as a carry early on and then bulk up in their build to be tanky for teamfights later. But it's fine to build more damage and focus on 1v1ing and smaller skirmishes if you don't have a great 5v5 comp. Next up for the mid lane, we have a champ we've been pushing forever now. Zillion. Zillion's win rate has hovered around the mid 50s for months now, making him one of the best champions in the role. I don't know why people refuse to play him though. Despite only having a single damaging ability, he's a surprisingly strong laner, able to neutralize most matchups once you get a few points in Q and some AP to one shot waves. His scaling is absolutely insane, being one of the best enablers in the game. If you're someone who likes to do it with a friend that plays hard carries, trust me, you wanna abuse this pick. And if you want a scaling pick that does the carrying herself, maybe you should give Kale a try instead. After all the nerfs she got, she's doing way better in the mid lane than she is as a top laner. You're still gonna get bullied early, but in the shorter, safer lane, that really just means you get pushed in and don't have lane prio. As long as you're playing smart, you'll always be able to get XP and most of the farm once it reaches your tower. Post 6, things get a little bit easier as you get ranged autos for securing more CS for yourself but pretty much never interact with the enemy laner until you have Zerkers and Nashers. Moving things down to the bottom lane, the first pick we have is Swain. His mid scope update made him really live up to his reputation as the demonic overlord of Noxus, with him becoming one of, if not the best pick in the game right after. Riot dished out some hefty nerfs, but even still, he's a super strong pick. He's way more popular in the mid and support positions, but let's not forget that his only reliable role for a long time was as a bot lane carry. Even now, he has a higher win rate than any traditional marksman in the role. The midscope update completely erased any of Swain's previous shortcomings. Yeah, he still needs his ult to be useful in fights, but it has a much lower cooldown and it lasts indefinitely as long as you can keep draining at least one foe. One little note for the build is that we think it's pretty important to include a death cap in it. A lot of people just fully invest in bruiserish or just straight up tank items, but remember, his healing has an AP ratio. Why not get both tankiness and damage in your build when you're supposed to be carrying fights? The other underrated bot lane pick we have for you is another mage in a Heimerdinger. The 12.12 buffs made him insanely OP, pulling him right back to being the ultra dominant lane bully he once was. Honestly, I don't really get why non traditional picks go underappreciated for so long. Champions like Swain and Heimer get rid of all the early game reliance normal AD carries have on their supports and just own the lane themselves. And in teamfights, you're still able to dish out huge damage while having more self-sufficient kits and the ability to buy Zhonyas. You know, after looking at how low the pick rates are for OP champs like Heimer and Swain, it really makes you wonder what's wrong with bot laners. This seems to happen more here than in any other role. It's like AD carry mains just love to pick a class of champions they can complain about just to have a reason to cry. Why not just pick what's super, super OP? And that brings us to today's question of the day. How do you decide what champs to play? Is it based off of what has a fun kit? Do they just copy streamers? Is it what fits the meta? Or maybe it's something else entirely. For me, it's aesthetics. If the champion looks cool, I'm gonna play it. If it looks stupid, you bet your bottom dollar that I'm not gonna go anywhere near. But whatever your answer, let us know down in the comments below. Now, let's get back on topic. Now to round things out with our supports, the first pick we have is Tarek. He was one of the champions we predicted would be super OP in a post durability patch world. And after a bit of people getting used to things, the prediction came true. Overall, he has the highest win rate support in the game when looking at all ranks, yet he remains criminally underpicked with under a 2% pick rate. He does have a bit of a learning curve, but once you master him, he's such a good pick, offering tons of utility. And finishing off our list, we've got the sad Mummy Amumu. 
The 12.12 buffs did a lot more for him than we thought, and he's the strongest engage support in the game right now. In fact, he's really one of the only ones that we'd even consider viable. He brings good trading in lane, with the all-in potential at level 6 obviously being super strong, with all the CC and damage that comes with his ult and double bandage toss, and of course, all that CC also makes him an incredibly strong team fighter once you get to later stages of the game. And that wraps things up for our underrated picks on Pat's 12.12b. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on our meta guides and so you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know how you decide what champs you play down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until next time, good luck on the rift and may the LP gods smile down upon you.